So now that we see all four of our overlapping, you're also going to notice that there's parts that are not a part of our circles and they're in the top corners, the bottom corners and the middle. That's the background. The background is going to be something that we're going to do last once all of our shapes have been colored in and we've done our color mixing. So right now we are going to go ahead and we're going to fill in this part of the green circle and this part of the green circle because we're mixing green with yellow, green with yellow. Because we're mixing uh, two colors in this spot and we're mixing on the paper, we're going to start with the lightest color first. So I'm going to go ahead and spin three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I want full yellow when I paint both of these shapes in. So just like I did before, I'm going to outline. While the paint is still wet, we're gonna go ahead and add our green. So I'll rinse my brush off. Now here's why the spins are helpful and why I wanted you to keep track of how many you've been doing. If we did 10 yellow, we don't want to do 10 green. If we do 10 green, green is way stronger than yellow and will overpower the yellow and it'll just be green at the end and we won't really notice that we added yellow to it. So I'm going to do way less spins. So for my green, I'm going to go ahead and only do one, two, three. I'm going to outline. And fill in my shape. And I want to continue moving the paint around so that the green starts picking up some of my wet yellow paint and we should get more of a yellowish green for the overlapping section. I don't need to clean my brush because I'm doing the exact same thing. So I don't need more paint because my brush is still wet and has plenty of green. So I'll go ahead, I'll outline my shape. So one thing that I noticed right away is when I painted my green over my yellow, I had a lot of green paint. So even though this first one is a yellowish green color, it's much darker than the one up here because I didn't get more paint. So if you like your colors to have more of a blend, you want it to be more of a yellow and green mixture where this one was more green heavy, Instead of doing three, maybe do two spins or one spin. Any more than three spins on a darker color, again, you're just going to get green and it's going to eliminate the yellow. This is not the only way to mix watercolor paints, uh, but for this project, it seemed to be the simplest for fourth grade and that's why I'm teaching it this way. I'm done with my green and yellow, and now I'm moving on to my overlap between yellow and blue, yellow and blue. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, except now I'm going to start with blue. So I'm going to wash my green out. I'm going to start with my lightest color first. So when I did my green and yellow mixture, 
I only did my green three times and green was extremely strong. I know that blue is even stronger than green, so I am definitely not going to do three spins on blue. So I'll rinse my brush off. I'm only going to go around once with my blue because I know how strong it is. I'm going to go ahead and outline first. And I don't need any more blue for these two shapes. What you're going to notice is the more I push this blue around, the more it's going to start mixing with the yellow that's wet and underneath it. So I went over this shape multiple times because I really wanted the two colors to mix in well. I'm not getting any more paint and I'm not getting any more water. I already have blue on my brush and my yellow is still wet. So I'm just going to take this wet brush with blue and continue So again, when I had my brush full of blue paint, that shape turned out darker than when I went from here to here without adding any more water or any more paint. So this value mixture is much lighter, which is totally okay. We're working with analogous colors because we know that they're going to mix well together and we're not gonna get any uh, grays or browns. We're just gonna get nice color mixtures and that's why analogous colors works so well when we're working with color mixing. So our analogous colors tell us where is our object. Our object is a circle. We know that they go together because the colors blend and have other values and hues inside of it. So what do we do with the background? Well, we need to decide what do we want the background to do? Do we want the background to push things forward or do we want it to blend in? If you wanted your background to blend in, maybe you're gonna stay with a cooler color and a darker color like some more purples or even black. If you want the background to help push things forward, because I have two cold colors and cold colors are stronger, you might want to pick something that is very light and bright, but not yellow. So for my background and our background for this one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use orange. Again, clean your brush whenever you're changing colors. Load your brush up so that the colors are strong and vibrant. We'll outline our shapes. So that'll do it for our watercolor mixing project where we use analogous colors. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what direction you want to go with your colors next week. Next week you'll work on a small sheet where you can try different analogous colors to see which one you're going to use when we work on our painting. And then I'll hand you your painting and you can go ahead and finish it. Decide if you want your background to be very different from your shapes or if you want it to blend in and you'll pick which one you like uh, the best. I really hope that this small example was helpful to you. Again, is this the only way to do watercolors? No, it definitely isn't. 
but it is an easy way to do things and a controlled way where we're not getting our paints all crazy messed up and we'll be able to use them for future projects. Our brushes will stay nice and pointy so we can use them for future projects. And it just keeps things moving uh, very safely. Hopefully as you guys get older, we can teach you some more dynamic things to do with watercolors and your brushes.